1855, David Livingston stood beside the great Zambezi and saw a mile of water fall majestically 420 feet into a gorge. He called this place Victoria Falls. And now, across another gorge of the Zambezi, a man-made wall has been built, also 420 feet high, the great dam at Kariba. Behind the dam, a lake has formed, 175 miles long, stretching back towards the Victoria Falls. 130 million acre feet of water spread over 2,000 square miles. This lake is changing the face of Africa. In 1955, Kariba's contact with the outside world was by a hunter's track. The people who lived there led a simple existence. The wind of change that was beginning to stir in Africa had not yet raised a rustle in Kariba. But the Great Dam changed all that. A township was built to accommodate 8,500 people, 7,000 of them Africans. Eight and a half thousand people in the middle of nowhere, needing electricity and water supply, schools, canteens, a hospital, and a swimming pool thrown in for good measure. People soon adapt themselves to the pleasures of shopping, and at the stores, business is brisk. Football became so popular that no one liked to suggest it was time to stop and play cricket. You've got to be really keen to play football in Central Africa in midsummer. The 20th century has arrived in the heart of primitive Africa, skipping a good few centuries on the way. Some people say that men living a Stone Age existence can't possibly adapt to a modern way of life in just a few years. But these men take to the internal combustion engine like ducks to water. Advertising is simple and direct. Lorry drivers on the dam get well paid. So what could be more natural than a driving school? You'd think they'd be building dams for generations. But perhaps welding is simple to a chap who can hunt an elephant with nothing but a poison spear. How to build a road in two easy lessons. Lesson number one, find out how to work the machine from someone who knows. Road building lesson number two, Go out and build a road. Looks pretty good, too. As long as there's someone willing to teach, there's plenty of people waiting to learn. He picked it up pretty quickly, but I wonder. Anyway, there's one good thing. He can't get lost. At Kariba, all roads lead to the dam. Today, there is no work, for Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, is arriving to open Kariba. Some of the men celebrate quietly over a cup of coffee, and the children get in some clapping practice. Others celebrate not so quietly. Down the great man-made lake comes a giant barge bringing the Queen Mother for the opening ceremony. The dam was built so that this lake would form and provide a constant head of water for the production of electricity from underground power stations.
there's plenty to dance about. Rhodesia is rich in mineral resources, but growing industries need power. Electricity is indispensable to all development and to modern living. Kariba will eventually supply two million horsepower. The Queen Mother mounts the platform for the opening ceremony. The whole world has now heard of Kariba, of the disastrous floods that inundated the Coffer Dam, of the 75 million pounds borrowed to finance the scheme, much of it from Britain. Kariba is a fine example of help by those who have to those who have not. 795,000 cubic yards of rock and earth were excavated to build the underground power station. Six turbo generators are connected to banks of transport stepping up the voltage to 330,000 volts. The dam itself is 2,025 feet long. Its maximum thickness, 80 feet. The amount of concrete used, 2,665,000 short tons. Power, ample power at reasonable rates. That's the object of Kariba. Already 890 miles of transmission line take power northwards to Lasaka and Kitwe and the Copper Belt mines, and southwards to Bulawayo and Salisbury. Cheap power, bringing industry and better living into the heart of Africa. Not so many years ago, local labor would have been used only for the most unskilled jobs. But at Kariba, Africans showed how effective they could be as tractor drivers, welders, fitters, electricians, and at many other skilled and semi-skilled tasks. Now the dam is finished and the vast Kariba Lake fills up behind it. Below the dam, the Great Zambezi is just a trickle. But as it winds its way across Africa, tributaries will swell it again until it sweeps proudly into the Indian Ocean. Above the lake, the Victoria Falls thunder grandly. Every minute, tens of millions of gallons of water fall majestically into the great chasm and boil through 40 miles of gorges to swell the new lake. Man has tamed the power of water to help bring a better life to the people of Africa. <laughs>